Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I kind of, I kind of want to try and figure out what happened to one of my pens. So, <laughs> I don't know. I store them upside down, so like the ink is pointing down, and that seems to be fine, except for the ones that I store. <laughs> ink is side up. I don't know what happened. Okay, so one of my pens just started leaking. And this is the, the Pilot Juice, the 0.5. I've, this is the second one I've purchased. I've never had this happen before. I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a little tiny piece of metal. Like, what in the world is going on? Okay, so I thought we would take it apart. Now, I know the parts of a pen. Like, you have the barrel. You have a tip. This one doesn't really, it has a little bit of a tip. There's a ballpoint tip that comes out. The ink chamber inside. There's the thrusting device. There's a spring. Okay, so I don't know what's happened. And I don't know how much of this pen I can actually take apart. So here's the ink chamber. We can see I still have ink left. Like I've done a pretty good job. These are typically, you know, to the midpoint. But something horrible has happened. Like there's a hair, sorry about that. And it's just leaking. And there's no, the spring is inside. Like you can see the spring inside, the metal spring. Can you see like down into the chamber thing, sort of? The spring is inside the thing. So this metal bit sticking out, that's super pokey isn't part of the metal spring. And I don't know where the ballpoint tip, a metal piece shard would come out like this. But I can't figure it out. Oh, Japan, tell me what's going on. You made this. And the ink is just, it's gotten everywhere, um, as ink does when it, you know, explodes. So I guess this pen imploded, which, you know, this pen wasn't super expensive. It was just a couple dollars, um, US dollar. But like, what is the metal thing? Should I pull it? Should I leave it? I have tweezers. <laughs> oh, let's make it worse, okay? I mean, it can't be any worse. It's already leaking. These are my, I don't know, some tweezers I have. Maybe I can cut it? Let's see if I can cut it and then maybe the pen will work. I don't know what it is or what I'm doing, but we're, we're doing it together. So, okay, well I cut it off. It's still really wonky though. I don't know what has happened. Let's see if I can clean this a little bit. Okay. Can I still write with this pen? It is really scrapey <clears throat> and not good. So I don't know what has happened here. I don't know why there was a metal thing sticking out. I don't understand the quality of some art supplies. Like I know things change and pigments change and where you can get stuff changes and how things are put together. They have to be put together in mass. You know, the company has to make money. So there's probably over a 50% markup on this actual product, considering that it's basically just, you know, pieces of plastic with little bits of metal. I cannot figure out what has gone so horribly wrong here with this pen. I've never had a Pilot Pen do this. I've had a Pilot Juice before, it was the same exact color. This is the turquoise green and it was fine. <laughs> I'm just making a goopy mess at this point. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. It's not a big deal, like monetarily or time or anything. I just, like it came out of nowhere. <laughs> like I hadn't done anything differently than all the days prior and all of a sudden there's a little metal shard and it's leaking ink everywhere. Clearly there is a piece involved in this pen that isn't something I know about. This is weird. 
this is why like in my mind I always consider you know I should probably just get a glass dip pen and like a jar of illustration ink um, I've had a couple from Winsor & Newton they're not light fast but I mean neither are pilot pens so it's moot but it's, it's why in my brain I always think should I do that instead should I just switch all my pens to things where it's refillable and there's no plastic parts. I mean, it's better for the environment, right? And I don't have to like constantly recycle and go through different um, pen recycling programs and stuff like TerraCycle with some of their uh, pen recycle programs. But like I contemplate this and then I'm like, do I really like this scratchy? Ugh. If you're a texture person and like a sound person, like misphonia is like a thing for you glass on paper I don't know I don't know if that is something that I can enjoy because nibs on paper is a lot like the metal nib like stainless steel or brass um, I've had a few of those and it's just not a smooth application like even like cheapy okay hold on let's get real cheap like even cheap Bic pens and the big pens are like the cheapest. Um, I think I can pull this guy apart. I think I can pull everything apart. Do you ever just do this to your art supplies? Just like take them apart and see what you're working with? Here's the grip. I don't even know if I can get this portion out. I don't think I can. This pen's in really good condition. Some of my bics are okay. Some of them are old, old, old. But even the application of a big pen is super smooth like it just glides even if the ink doesn't come out completely even I mean you can get like 60 of these pens for five bucks but it just it's smooth do you see what I'm saying and like when you talk about nibs and when you get to other materials it's it gets scratchy and um, kind of coarse. And if your paper has more texture, this is an Archer Olive Bullet Journal. Um, you really start to feel it. And sometimes it makes for a rather unpleasant drawing experience. Like it's not as gentle. I can't explain it. But when you, you get to like the one hour mark, the two hour mark, the three hour mark in an illustration, having things that are like, scratchy or patchy or uneven or sound rough or like do weird things to the paper or just feel like it's like painful <laughs> like it just gets to be too much after a few hours like I, I, I don't know it could just be me like it could totally 100% be me and you can just be like in the comment section Kendra it's just you <laughs> the scratchy bit suck it up buttercup like it could totally just be me but I don't know that I want to do that like I see okay oh man I see beautiful inks don't think I don't see some crazy gorgeous inks I will throw up some pictures oh I hope this doesn't tempt you but like just know that there are companies out there that make beautiful inks um ferris wheel press makes some of the most beautiful inks I've ever seen. Um, it's just not even fair. Like even their packaging is stunning. Um, they have sketchbooks that are stunning. I, I can't with them, but <laughs> like woo temptation personified, especially when it comes to things that have like built in duotone or shimmer or, I mean, we can talk about the mica and stuff. Um, and those mines in India and that's a whole that's a whole situation um, but like the glitter and the shimmer and the things like that's really beautiful and stunning and it can make for really interesting illustrations especially if you're just doing like a monotone one color like I know April's in a day but you may be watching this and it's already April but mermaid if you wanted to draw something like a mermaid and you're using one ink, one color, and it has built in shimmer, like that's already built in. And so the scales and what you're trying to create with the mermaid, it's going to be beautiful. Um, <laughs> I 
I just don't know if a glass dip pen is for me. And I, what I would take into consideration um, with overhauling or changing some of the things that I have would be, I would have to use up all the pens I have, which you and I both know. I have dozens of pens. Um, I just don't, and then it's a lot of thinking about, well, you could do pens that have like cartridges. And I do have one. I have, I did the video on the Rot Ring Isograph. And this is fine. I've actually filled, um, this is the point three. And he's lovely. I mean, there is a little, like you can tell that the nib is metal, but it's still smooth, okay? Um, But I have filled, oh gosh, if I can get this open at this juncture in time. Go, go gadget wrists, okay. But I've filled this a couple times and it looks like it's low again. Um, I think maybe the cartridge on the other rot ring, um, gosh, the other one that they make has a bigger reservoir. But to constantly have to change these out and clean the nibs, like that's a lot of work. Like I am definitely a grab and go person. Like grab a color, draw with it. See this one, there's no pokey thing sticking out of this one. I don't know what the heck happened with this guy. Unless there's something else built into the ballpoint that I'm not aware of. Sorry, I have this on super zoom so you can see the mess, but maybe that's not helping so much. Okay, so in consideration of switching over, um, cleanup, like setup, cleanup, it would be why I would prefer a glass dip pen over something like a nibbed pen with cartridges and chambers and different pieces, parts, because there's a lot of those and, oh gosh, I don't know, oh, you guys, folks, folks, um, Hmm. Let me think about it. So, okay. If you're just starting out or you're thinking about switching stuff up, um, Jet Pens has some really good like articles and comparison charts. They're called under the tab called guides. So jetpens.com and then guides. Um, you can click on Beginner fountain pens, the best fountain pens, cleaning a fountain pen, how to write with a fountain pen, fountain pen filling system explained, how to install ink cartridges. Like it, it breaks down the different types of supplies and then there's all these guides on how to use them. So I would have to figure out, like, do I want a fountain pen? What do I want for the different pieces, parts on the inside for cleaning and changing out and doing different colors? It's why I would lean towards more of a dip pen because then I'm just dipping into different pots and different jars and then it's a matter of purchasing different pots and different jars of ink and then storing those and having those and then just cleaning off the glass when I'm done. I don't know. I can tell you right now that when it comes to pilot pens, I was using these for journaling. When it comes to pilot pens, I can go through these like nobody's business with journaling. So filling an A5 page I can go through one of these in like a couple months and for the price, it's not lucrative. Like it's not a good idea. When it comes to like brush pens, like Tombow, I don't have a lot of Tombows. I used to use these for like calligraphy um, and hand lettering, like trying to figure out the skinny to the, the big. Do you know what I'm saying? I still don't know the best method for calligraphy. I still hand letter, but for practicing, like for under $2, Tombos are nice. I don't know. I just don't know, folks. I don't know if this is something I want to change up. And then because I have like preferences. So this is like, I have Microns, I have O5s, I have O3s. Those are kind of my two favorite. O7 gets a little wide. Um, this is the sepia, but I like the blue black and I like the hunter green and I have the Copic multi-liner. The brown isn't very different from their 
from their other brown that they carry. It's kind of strange. Um, the nibs on these aren't the best. They're just not, they're too, um, I'm too heavy handed, I think for the nibs, for the Copic. And then I tried one of these, the multi-liner, like these, these are almost 10 US dollars. And these have things and you can change these out. Oh gosh, I don't even think I can open it up. I can't open up any more pens today. And it's starting to lose its opacity. Like it was really dark black and now it's more gray. And I'm not sure why. Like it doesn't write from the side anymore. I have to be straight down with it. Um, and again, I'm probably way too heavy handed for these pens. So maybe that could be my nib problem. I am not sure what's going down. I'm not sure what happened with this pen. I'm not sure if pens are the way to go for me anymore. Like I really, really, really like this, but I don't want to have to constantly clean it out and switch colors. That is too much work. That's like cleaning brushes. I don't mind cleaning brushes. Um, watercolor brushes, I can rinse them and leave them by the sink. We have a double bathroom, um, a double sink in the main bedroom, bathroom. And I can just rinse them and kind of leave them there. And then at the end of the week, I can go through with actual brush cleaner, my general's brush cleaner, and then really thoroughly clean them and make sure they're dry and put them away properly. Uh, acrylic you can't leave. Sorry, you just can't. I don't, I've never used oil, so I can't help with the oil painting process of cleaning brushes, but I don't want to have to buy like dozens of these and then label them. This is the pink ink. This is the purple. This is the sepia. I don't know if that's the way to go where I literally use up all my pens and then switch over to pots of ink. And I just don't know. This is the thing. I wish there was a trial, an art supply library. I've mentioned this before. We need one. I need one. I want to go to an art supply library. I want to check out a dip pen and, you know, a couple things of ink, like a standard regular, we could do a Higgins, like it doesn't have to be fancy pants. Um, and then maybe something a little kind of crazy. And I want to see if that's something that uh, feels all right, sounds all right, works all right, where I can get maybe different angles and get di a couple different widths with the same pen. Like if I go to Jet Pens, I'll throw up pictures of things as I go. Um, I don't know if they come with different size tips. Like I don't know anything about these. Like these are $23, okay? This is the most basic, basic. It's very pretty. Um, scrape the sides of the nib against the opening of the bottle to drain excess ink. The only ink left on the nib should be the ink held inside the small capillary grooves that spiral around the tip. As you write, turn the pen slightly whenever the pen starts to run out, allowing the ink from the other grooves to be used. Okay, I don't know <laughs> many things. How much drawing I can get done before I have to dip the ink again. And it's gonna be one of those things, I think like a trial and error where you dip and then you go to draw again and it has maybe a little bit too much ink and you need to get the hang of how much you dip in so it matches the lines and the weights of the lines you're already creating and drawing. Do you see what I'm saying? Like these are the things I'm trying to think about. Like is this something where I just use up all my pens and boy do I have a lot and it's gonna be a lot of black and boring um, because I have so many different black pens. I receive so many as gifts. People gave me a lot of fine liner pens and then through the years I've just held on to things running out of ink because it's nice to have a wide variety of grays like warm and cool grays. I don't know what I should do. Uh, if you are familiar with glass dip pens, and I'm just gonna throw up pictures of a variety of different ones so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. Do you use it for writing, for journaling? Do you use it for illustration? I'm, I'm curious for these, for the illustration aspect. Um, 
journaling, it's the words, it's not the ink that's important to me. Um, because I go through so much ink, it doesn't matter. But for illustration, I want things to line up. When I'm drawing, oh gosh, let's get out my little thing here. When I'm drawing an illustration, I want to know that I can control the amount of ink that's coming out so it's evenly spaced, it's evenly parsed. Like I don't want a glob to come out or a puddle or something I can't control for, oh, like things leaking and bleeding through. I wanna be able to like count on what I'm doing. This is kind of a weird one. Welcome to my weird. So this one I did with the isograph, this is a glass frog. I really want to be able to control, have ultimate control of the ink coming out so I can fade a color, go from a completely opaque to the page. Like scribbles to stipple. I want to be able to control every single aspect so I can get the subject matter down because it's the subject matter that I'm looking at when I'm done. So if I'm constantly worried that the ink is gonna come out uneven or I don't know what the heck I'm doing, um, it's gonna be frustrating for a while. And I know practice is progress, but I just, I've been having trouble with some of my microns for a while, which is why, that was in the video, which is why I tried and moved on to this one so I, the nib is metal and I really like it. I really do. Um, I just don't know for other colors, what is the best like cost saving. Um, obviously I love sepia. I kind of have a thing for gold when it comes to this book. Uh, there would be some colors that I definitely would want to have. Blue is always a color I want to have. I, kind of obsessed with blue. It's my favorite. So <laughs> my thought process is this. I buy my supplies, my mediums in the summer when I get an itch and I start sort of online browsing and the weather's changing and the sun's out and I want to do all the things. Do I want to change it up or do I want to wait a whole calendar year before I buy new pens. Like I don't, I can't use up all the pens I have in a year. And <laughs> welcome to the budget portion of my brain. I could, in theory, in June, buy one glass pen and one jar of ink. I might have some still, I don't know if I donated them or not. Um, my brain's just not there with <laughs> where I'm at. Um, and I could start practicing and get comfortable with a glass dip pen and what that entails and not having to constantly throw away huge chunks of plastic. Like it would be nice to recycle glass jars that are glass jars of, you know, the ink. I like that aspect of it a lot, especially since things have to be brought into where I'm low where I'm at and there's a lot of like think about gas and fuel and cost and shipping and stuff for the environment um but if I'm constantly practicing with a glass dip pen I'm still not using up all my other pen inks so I can wait a calendar year this is like such a hurry up and wait thing with me I can wait a calendar year I don't know if I can use up all the pens I have <laughs> on illustrations like I could stop using this one and save them and just try and use up as much microns as I can with my other fine liners before I attempt to switch over. I just want to practice with one. Like I want to try it. I want to see if it's something that's comfortable, if I like the weight, if I like how it feels gliding across the page, if it's something that, um, like I've never held a glass pen. I don't know if that's something that's uncomfortable long term. Because again, I can spend three hours on a drawing. Like, that's not a problem. 
don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it'd probably be under $50, right? For a pen and like a jar of ink. I'm rounding up because my brain. Um, so that's still within all my budget stuff. Like that's not a problem. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's the way to go. Like environmentally, it's cool. And maybe for illustrations, it's cool. But I have to realize that not every single piece of paper I go to draw on is either coated or is super thick. Like sometimes I just use crap paper. <laughs> like I'm just using up some stuff I have left and it's not the echelon of all the things. It's not the greatest paper in the world. So I don't know what that ink does on average papers. Like I don't, I have no idea. And I don't even know if they have a guide. I don't know. Guides, beginners, guides. I can search guides. Okay, so I'm gonna link this Jet Pens beginner's guide thing and you can search all the guides. Let's see if they have one for glass dip pens. If they do, I'll link that too. How to use a glass dip pen, unique dip pens, the 44 best pens for 2020. Oh, goodness. Noodler's fo Fountain Pen Inks, a comprehensive guide. See, I don't know anything about, oh, they have a guide for left-handed folks. I love that. Can I say I love that? They're definitely beautiful. Like the glass blown dip pens are, they're stunning. That's like definitely visually really, really pretty. Um, how to use them. Okay. They do have a chart viscosity, low, medium, high brushing necessary. The other thing is drying time with loose ink and me, you know, moving my hand and getting excited and drawing at different locations on the page. Sometimes I smear stuff and spread stuff around, but it looks like the nibs. Here's some for calligraphy, glass dip pen drawing techniques. I would need a very fine tipped cleaning and storing. Um, swish it in water, then dry it with a cloth, rag, or paper towel. If you use India ink or ink with metallic particles, oh, this is good to know. A toothbrush or a small paintbrush will be necessary to get into the grooves to remove residue. Yeah, that's the thing. If I'm doing stuff with metallic particles and then I go and clean it and switch to another color, I could be putting metallic stuff everywhere and it could be bleeding into every illustration. Um, Take a second and watch how the ink blooms and swirls in water. Okay, okay. Most convenient and effective option is the original packaging. A pen rest, a pen tray. Hmm, so they're saying store it horizontal. Oh, I don't know anything about these. I am up for recommendations, ideas, thoughts, opinions. Has my brain fallen down a rabbit hole of a thing I think I need, but I don't. Uh, the ink is either an all or nothing flow. Let's see. Huh. Do glass pens come in different point sizes? This is my question don't necessarily have defined tip sizes the same way that say a fountain pen would. The tip sizes can differ from manufacturer to manufacturer. We found that Geary Drop glass pens write a little finer than glass pens from other brands are handmade. There will be variances from pen to pen. So that's the other thing is I won't be able to be like, I need a 0.3 glass dip pen, please. That's not something that they do. What is a Geary Drop glass pen? I don't, I don't know. I'll throw up a picture. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of pictures in this. I hope you don't mind. Um, it takes me longer to put together those videos that have that. Oh, it's $110 for this pen. Oh, see, that's not, no, that's a no. That's a hard no. This one's 91, no. 86, no. No way. That is not budget. Like this one's pretty. I like the emerald. 
23 bucks is a yes. 110 is a hard no. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't know that that's something I will be buying this time around. I'm definitely going to note it in my planner for purchasing and future ideas and things. Um, I need to do like a, a pros cons list of what's working right now, what isn't working, why it might be beneficial to switch over. Who does it benefit? Does it benefit me? Does it benefit my wallet? Like, I don't know how much illustration I can get done with one jar of ink. And maybe that one jar of ink lasts a really long time. And in which case that would be super beneficial. Um, I also don't know like how thick it comes out, how long drying time. Like there's a lot of pluses and minuses with trying to overhaul and switch out some of my stuff for better solutions. I just, the amount of plastic and this year's already pretty bad. <laughs> like my empties jar already is really bad. So it's just too much plastic. And I'm too heavy handed with the nibs. It's what it is. It is what it is. I just don't know what the best solution is at this point. You know? Especially since I want to just be able to grab and go. I don't want to have to like clean and change out. I wouldn't say I'm lazy. I'd say I'm efficient. <laughs> There's a way to sugarcoat all this, but yeah. So welcome to one pen broke and I have spiraled and I'm rethinking all the ink I own now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is. It's just ridiculous. And I don't even know, like, it could be one of those things where I could use up all my pens and then, which, I mean, let's be honest, that would take like a year or two, and then buy a glass dip pen and buy a couple jars of stuff and then I could still go back and end up grabbing pens anyway. Because old habits die hard and I just can't let go and you know what I mean? I don't even know if I know what I mean at this point. Welcome to what my week has been like. <laughs> notes. Make copious notes. Pros and cons. Look at budgets. Look at numbers. Look at what I have. Look at my inventory of the pens I own. Like the pens I own inventory. Like I haven't busted this guy out in a while. But I already own, I own some stuff. You know what I mean? So I need to think, I need to think about it. I need to contemplate what would be the best thing long-term. Yep, yep. So I haven't decided a thing. <laughs> I'm just talking it out. Stage one is talking it out with you because you are the best person to talk it out with. My pen exploded. <laughs> just started leaking and now I'm rethinking everything <laughs> okay I hope you enjoy this video I don't know what to tell you I hope your week is absolutely wonderful I hope all your art supplies are high quality and never do anything you don't want them to do <laughs> all right I'll talk to you later bye